You're fucking with the wrong girl, Pippi. Am I? I love you. Keep your pants on. Let's go check the door out. Are you, are you flued? Welcome back to the Quarantine Games! Uh, we're resuming our weekly playthrough of Dungeons & Dragons with another installment of Social Distancing and Dungeons & Dragons. Last we met, our funny little heroes continued their search for Floon Blogmar at the Skewered Dragon, where after a spirited performance, they learned he and his compatriot Renair were likely hauled off to a nearby warehouse. It was there that they stumbled upon four Kenku, strange avian-like creatures, which they made short work of. Then, from the back room, a stirring. Does this sound familiar to you? Yeah, I chopped, yes. I chopped a bird's head off. Oh yeah, you did. A uh, quick note for you all. Um, we're, we're filming this around dinner time, so I, I do have some saltines I'm going to be munching on. I don't know if they exist in the Dungeons and Dragons world. Crackers. You could call. You just say it's like a little shortbread or hard shortbread or something. Right. I have my mug with the queen on it. And I have my Chardonnay. Yes, I may. <laughs> Brian loves his Chardonnay or Steve. I or love whatever. Steve loves Chardonnay. Uh, everything, in the, everything in the D&D world is in the, any other world. Everything's game here. Well, let's, uh, so let's jump back into it. You're in this first floor of this warehouse. Um, there's a second floor as well that you can see. Uh, you heard a stirring from the back room. You'll probably want to check that out. But keep in mind, you can also explore the warehouse a bit. Uh, there seems to be some, some rooms to it, so you can uh, have at it. Let's jump back in. All right, you guys hang out here with the birds. I'm gonna go find Floon. You can go find that old man. I want to talk to these parrots. Like I said, my, my dad once took me to the Tiki Room in Disneyland. And I, I remember. I know what that is. I do know what that is, Keza. You just don't know. You don't know. Let us walk toward the muffled voice that seems to be calling our presence. What about the birds? The Kenku are, are very scared, and they know if they, at this point, make a run for it, it seems like that feels like it might be a little too much of a risk for them. You, you scared the hell out of them. You shot a, a bolt in their direction, and you also decapitated their friends. So... Yeah, that seems fair. I'm gonna come back here and talk to them about that tiki room, though. All right, uh, you walk into the back room, and you see cowered in the corner a man sort of disassembling his ropes that were tied around his wrists. A very regal-looking man, and he says, Oh, thank goodness. Did you take care of those wretched creatures out there? Uh, we did. Two of them are dead. The other two are uh, uh, hostage. Um, who are you, are you Floon? Oh, no. I'm Renair. Oh. <gasps> Renair. Renair. Mm, yes. Yes. Uh, why are you here? Why, uh, Renair, you are somebody with a lot of money and prestige in this city. Why are you in this warehouse? Well, I'll tell you. I was out, you know, a couple of days ago. I was drinking with my friend Floon. We had a bit of a toss back over at the skewered dragon and on our way out we were jumped by treacherous thugs and brought here to this warehouse. Now they hauled Floon off and I suspect that they thought Floon was I. Because you're the son of the previous open lord. Yes, uh, a lot of people after him. Uh, they probably wanted to get to him via me, unfortunately. You seem very calm for somebody who's been here for the past few days. I'm a man of means. I figured at some point someone might uh, toss up a pretty penny to get me out of here. The men who brought me here, I'm pretty sure, are all dead. How do we know that you just didn't see that we were coming and then pretended that you were tied up in this room? And then we walked in and in fact, you're actually the boss of this whole operation. I don't know. I guess you don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> What else can you uh, tell us about the man, the men who kidnapped you? Well, I'm pretty sure they were from the Zentarim Guild. I'm not entirely sure, but I know that the Zentarim think my father embezzled a large amount of gold while he was open lord, and that he hid the dragon somewhere in the city. They actually think that they can find it by using an artifact called the Stone of Galor, which was in the hands of the Xanathar Guild until recently. Apparently someone stole it. The Zens thought I knew something about all of this, but I don't. My father and I actually aren't that close. He's kind of a a-hole. We've heard. Oh yes, people are not too <laughs> big on him here in Waterdeep. Can we trust this gentleman? I don't know if we can trust him. 
I'm gonna roll an insight check because uh, I do have a good modifier, a plus four modifier. I'm gonna roll, uh, I roll a 12 plus four, 16. You gaze into this man's eyes uh, and look for little, uh, what do they call those, like micro expressions to see if uh, he seems like he's trying to fleece you guys or pull one over on you. Uh, he seems like a trustworthy man. He seems to be telling you the truth. Quick question for you, one more question, Renair, for you. What is it about this Floon character that it makes him so appealing? Why does everybody want a piece of him? I don't know, actually, I don't, you know, I don't think they wanted a piece of him so much as a piece of me. Granted, maybe I'm a coward, because when they hauled him away, I didn't speak up and say, by the way, you're not hauling off Renair right now, that's my friend Floon, that's on me. I don't feel good about it, but, you know, they're probably more interested in me than my good friend Floon, who is now unfortunately wrapped up in all this. Should we wrap him up and trade him for Floon? What do you guys think? Oh. That sounds like a good idea. You know, that we could get Floon back if, they, if we just give him the right person. Yeah, I'm, I'm, down for tr uh, I'm down for kidnapping the trust fund baby. Let's do that. <laughs> all right, Renair, listen up. You've been very unhelpful. We're we're gonna we're gonna take you with us. We're we're going to find your friend Floon. You're gonna you're just gonna come for along for the ride. We think you could be helpful in in searching for your friend. I mean, I'm I'm happy to join you in your quest. I'm <laughs> I'm pretty good with a rapier. Oh great! Then yeah, then join us. Join us in our quest. All right. Can I sidebar? Okay. I'm gonna sidebar. We'll just let's just make him think he's joining us and then we'll trade him at the last minute. I mean, it'd be easier than ha hauling him the whole time and having him trying to escape the whole time. Agreed. Okay, end of the sidebar. All right, let's get the show on the road. I say we go check out the dead bodies first, take a look at them, and then see if we can gather any clues for the future. So let's walk over there. Why don't you do a, an investigation check on the bodies? We have a roll 11 plus two, 13. Yeah, looking at the bodies, there there's 12 of them here, so quite a pile. Um, it, it seems like five of the bodies are from one gang and they seem to have um, tattoos of that winged snake that you've seen so many places. So they seem like they may be part of that whole Zentarim crowd. The other seven or so of them has a, a mark on one of his hands. It's like a circle with 10 spokes coming out of it. And based on what you've heard, you would guess that uh, this, this crowd might be from the Xanathar gang. Let's do a perception check on this little warehouse. I rolled a, a, a five plus three, which is eight. Um, so uh, using your perception, you can tell that this is a warehouse. Uh, it seems like everyone hushes a bit and you listen, and it doesn't sound like there's any other life stirring anywhere. Um, someone else could also do a perception check. I'm gonna do a perception check. Well, you know, I'm coming off 20 wines, so I, uh... <laughs> the thing is, I'm not really that well at, uh, doing that well at perceiving things. Uh, 15 what plus 15 do? 17. 17 perception. Hmm. You do notice off to the back of the room, there appears to be, um, a piece of the wall that is perhaps, uh, a hidden doorway of some kind. A hidden doorway? That is, oh my lord. This is like a dream come true. Keep your pants on, let's go check the door out. You push this uh, this secret door a bit and it slides out of the way. As it opens, you actually hear a bell ringing upstairs in one of the rooms. Um, and as you venture in, it appears to be just a sort of a secret stash room, almost like a glorified closet. And there's a couple crates in here. I love this. This is absolutely entertaining. I break open the crate. There's two crates. Which one do you want to break open? The right one. Okay, you open the right one. Uh, in the right crate, uh, you find four gorgeous paintings. Um, they're beautiful. They appear to depict the cities uh, from around the realm. Um, and they seem like they might be worth a pretty penny if you uh, Holy. if you want to take them. Renair, do you know what this is, Renair? Uh, no, but uh, I do recognize that uh, those do seem to be the cities of Luscon, Neverwinter, Silvery Moon, and Baldur's Gate. Let's take them with us. Yeah, why not? Let's see what's in box number two. I giddily walk over to the crate and pry it open like a child on Christmas morning. Oh, well, you pry open the gate and 
a, a, a glints dance across your face as you see 15 10 pound silver trade bars. It's a big old hunk of silver. Oh, sounds good. In case we fight a werewolf or something. Uh, Renair eyes the trade bars and he says, hmm, those might be able to fetch you a pretty penny. I'm uh, no merchant myself, but I would guess those would be worth 50 dragons each or so. Oh, <gasps> whoa. Then let's give them to Renair. He could hold them for us. Oh, no, he's going to run off. Absolutely. Don't give him. Why, why would you give them to Renair? Because if he runs off, then I have an excuse to shoot him in the head. You know, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no problem whatsoever. Sounds good. Yeah, you keep those safe. Happy to. Like I said, I'm happy to. As you are exiting this tiny little room, you hear a great commotion from the first floor uh, near where you had entered this warehouse. And uh, through that front door, they, they kick it in. The city watch has stormed the building. Um, about a dozen city watch officers storm in. It appears to be someone in charge of everyone. He's, he's kind of casing the joint. Uh, he gets eyes on everybody and he stops you guys dead in your tracks. He says, you there, freeze. Holy shit, I'm so happy that you guys showed up. You should have seen it. There was an entire gang of them that came in here. We just kind of came over because we heard the commotion. Anyways, I, they, they wasted all these folks over here and then they tied this guy up. He's all freaking out. We're just trying to help out. We came here at the same time as you guys. I was actually about to call you, so I'm happy that you showed up. We had reports of suspicious activity over here and we thought we'd check it out. Uh, clearly there was some kind of scuffle going on here. How did you all get wrapped up in this? Well, I heard the banging from down the street. I kind of have a house that I just moved into recently. I'm a performer. Anyways, I wanted to see what the commotion was because it was how hard, you know, hard for me to sleep and I got a performance tomorrow. Anyways, I walk in here and I just see this pile of bodies. It's kind of crazy. So uh, that's kind of how we got here. Uh, yeah, so we're a roll for deception. Looks like I rolled a 13 with a plus five, which is 18. He's, he sizes you up. He seems to be uh, pretty trusting of, wh of what you're saying. Uh, while he's still sort of uh, keeping eyes on you guys, he points to his officers and says, the Kenku, round him up. And his uh, officers uh, start to arrest those two uh, remaining Kenku and haul them out of the warehouse. Then he turns his attention to you as his uh, officers start to go around and size up the crime scene. So, so you're, oh. Renair, I didn't recognize you there. Uh, good to see you, sir. Renair tips his cap to him. What exactly was going on here? How did you get roped up into this? And Renair starts to volunteer some details and he says, oh, these kind folk entered as those nasty Kenku were looting the place. And uh, in, in one way, they possibly saved my life, but uh, we're all on the lookout for our friend Floon. Yeah, exactly how I recollect it. Exactly how he tells it. Yep, mm. yep, yep. Mm -hmm. mm. Renair, you seem to know this guy. What's his deal? Oh, this is uh, Captain Staggett. He, he, he leads up the city watch. A pretty, uh, pretty well-known guy. Nice guy. People like him. He's tough on crime. Captain, you seem like an a intelligent man. Um, we, we're missing our friend Floon. It's, it's our impression that he has been kidnapped by, by one of the gangs, either the Xanathar, the Zentarim. Could you tell us any more about, about those gangs and, and what might have happened to our friend? Uh, all I know is they're, they're at odds with each other. Zentarim are after some kind of stone or something. Uh, we haven't gotten all the details. We're really hoping they'll just kill each other and we can wash our hands of it. We've actually been uh, casing the docks lately because we've been keeping an eye out for a fella named Erstal Floxen. And we think he's actually kind of a Zentarim higher up. He may be uh, responsible for a lot of this nasty business that's been going around, but jury's out on that. You know anything about how to get into the sewers? The sewers? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, if you, there's, there's uh, manholes all over town. Um, why? Did you hear any whereabouts of anyone down there? No, nothing. Just curious. Huh. Huh. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't go down there. I'm primarily concerned. Me and the watch are above ground folks. Uh, it's quite possible there's a lot of gang activity down in those sewers, but uh, again, I don't want to dip my toes in that. We've got enough problems to worry about up here. 
Well, thank you, sir. All right, well, if you don't mind, I have some business to tend to here, so uh, I'm gonna get on with that. And you guys are left to your own devices once more. I feel like we've really exhausted the warehouse. I would love to get into the sewage that we were talking about earlier. Let's leave this Costco, let's go. Yeah, let's, let's go to the sewage. All right, we, we're going to try to find a manhole to climb down. And Renair, you're coming with us, right, Renair? Yes, of course I am, I told you I would. We march out of the warehouse and we try to look for a manhole on the street to climb down. To the manhole! You walk out onto the street, it is dawn now. Uh, uh, gray morning light starts to fall onto the shimmering streets of the dock ward. Um, the uh, streets are largely deserted. You don't see a manhole on this stretch of street, but you do see a sort of a fella sleeping on a stoop. Um, he may be able to point you in the right direction. But, but before we do, though, I just want to just say one more time for you, uh, my friends here, Keza, Steve, Renair, you're my homies. You're my homies and I love you till I die. Very good. Cool, yeah. Especially you, Steve. I love you so much that, um, that I just love you. Period. End of story. Steve, don't you uh, love me too? You know, when someone says I love you, you say I love you back. I think we're not at that stage yet. I think we should look down this manhole and then uh, maybe somewhere down the line. Let's just take it slow, huh? So we, we walk over and, and go approach the sleeping man. Wakey, wakey, cousin bakey. The man uh, wakes up with a start. Oh, oh who's, who's talking to little Pippi? Ooh. Pippi? Hi, Pippi. Uh, could you sh show us to where a manhole might be? Oh, a little manhole? Hmm. I think I've seen one of those around here, yes. <laughs> you know what might jog my memory is a little coin. You're fucking with the wrong girl, Pippi. Am I? If you don't tell us where this, uh, this manhole is, Pippi. Kez over here is gonna make a manhole in you. And uh, I don't think you, I don't think you want that. So uh, why don't you tell us where the manhole is and we don't have to, we don't have to get to that point of this conflict. Roll for intimidation. Why do you all default to fighting? We have coin. Nah, uh, I rolled a, I rolled an 11 with plus four. Pippi seems a bit taken aback. Why would you be so cool to little Pippi Copper Mop? Well, I don't want to get punched in the face, so I will direct you to that pile of manure in the middle of the street over there, for under it is a wonderful little manhole. You sure you're not just going to have us dig through a big pile of shit for no reason? <laughs> no. Oh, Pippi wouldn't do that. <laughs> I hope not, because I would hate for Pippi to go missing. Pippi would hate that too. We have just woken this man up for no reason and threatened to kill him. Stephanos, could you do me a favor and uh, shut the hell up? <laughs> Let's just go to the manure and see what's going on. I'm going to stand here with Pippi while you guys go over, clear that manure, and that way if there's a manhole cover, I'll walk over. If there's not a manhole cover, then I'll punch Pippi in the face. All right. I'm going to walk over, you know, skip to my loo over to that pile of poo and uh, uh, dig it up, you know, see what's underneath <laughs> it. I see a lot. Wow. That's a oh, my God. Oh my god. Oh, it smells worse than Steve. Oh, very good, very good. Take my, I guess my hands, because I got nothing with me. And I just start m pushing the poop over. So yes, you, you dig up uh, uh, the manure, and beneath it is, in fact, a manhole cover. And Pippi, standing next to Keza, goes... Just like, just like Pippi said. And I lean down and I pat Pippi on the head and I say, thank you very much, sir. And then I walk over to my friends. How do I wash my hands? This is quite nasty. I don't know. Can you use a healing spell for that? No, he is quite covered in shit. So that's unfortunately the reality of the situation. Oh, no. All right. Well, I guess it's me and you now, Steve. We just smell like poop. I never actually went over there to help you with the door. I... <laughs> no, but you just smell like poop normally. I don't know what he's talking about. I think I smell like roses. I'm gonna open up the uh, the thing that's uh, blocking the manhole. Can we send Renair down first? Oh, you'd like me to go first. So Renair jumps down into the sewers. Do you guys want to follow him? He, he sounds like he's fine down there. Let's go. Yeah. We should probably wait a second or two to see if he actually makes it out of there. Like if we hear like a scream, like ah, my leg, you shot me or something like that. All right, all right, we'll wait a beat. If we look different, it's because we took a break. We ran out of time. So it's a different day now. We did. Sorry. That's the magic of <laughs> editing, though. So... It's like we never left. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> you good down there, buddy? 
hey, say something, Renair, so I know it's you down there. Like, hey, my name's Renair. I don't have a pistol held to my head. My name's Renair. I don't have a pistol held to my head. Okay. Works for me. <laughs> All right, I'm going down. It is very dark down here. So if you have, I don't know, you may want to check your characters to see if they have dark vision or I a do. torch. You do. I have dark vision. If you don't, you may want a torch of some kind. I have light. I have light. Oh, you have light. I have light. Oh, I, I have dark vision too. I'd like to use too. my light. Oh, you guys are all fine then. You got great eyes. You, uh, you can nice. use your light as well. A putrid stream flows along this sewer tunnel, which leads in two directions. In one Was direction. Was that you, Steve? The putrid stream? <laughs> <laughs> A little rasin. Very good, Stephanos. I remember elementary. This sewer tunnel leads in two directions. In one direction, you see a tiny symbol drawn on the wall in yellow chalk, a palm-sized mm. circle with 10 equidistant spokes radiating oh, from no. its circumference. Oh, no, I've seen that before. So you can choose uh, well, the, which tunnel to go down. Uh, the bird said to follow the yellow sign. Obviously, yes, the spokes. We've seen that all over the place. You're supposed uh, so you keep walking down the tunnel and then there's another fork in the tunnel. Um, when, once you know it, one of the tunnels has another so uh, chalk symbol and the other one does not. Uh, which way would you like to go? Steve, are you smart enough to figure this one out? <laughs> I love it. Eh, I guess in the end, I really don't care what happens, so let's just do whatever you guys want to do. <laughs> let's stop asking, Steve. I want to see Flume. You're going to continue to walk through the sewer. Uh, your feet are trudging through the muck. Uh, it's gonna take a bit, so you've got you've got a five minutes to talk here while you traverse some some through some some human sewage. Well, now we're all covered in shit. This is gross. I don't like it. Stephanos, where are you up to in sh shit right now? Looks like it's about chin high for that young man. Yes, I'm keeping my head above water, but don't worry. It's not water. I still have a body under here. Climb up. Come on. Oh no, it's all right. I don't want to put my pooey legs on your shoulders though. You're gonna drown in feces. Okay, fine, thank you very much, I'm going on. <laughs> Bye -bye. All right, so you continue to walk for about an hour and eventually you reach another impasse. Again, you can see a tunnel with another chalk mark near it, but floating near the symbol is a spherical grapefruit-sized creature with a bulging central eye and four stumpy eye stalks. It bears its teeth at you. Is it a beholder? Uh, you can attempt to do a nature check on it. I have plus two animal handling. Can I try to handle it? Sure. Uh, I, got, I rolled a four, plus two is a six. <laughs> you approach it and attempt to handle it, and it uh, <laughs> snaps its teeth at you. Uh, everybody roll for initiative. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Are you serious? Uh, I rolled a 13. Looks like I rolled a 17 plus two, 19. I rolled an eight. And your old pal Renair is here too, so he's gonna fight with you. You know, Renair, if you do well enough, you could replace Steve. I, Just kidding, I'm loyal to, to my, my buddy Steve. I love you, Steve. Just jabbing with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you were just joking. I'm so glad. You got nowhere to be. Thank you for handling that situation with the animal hand. <laughs> <laughs> <By the way. laughs> a natural Joe exotic we have here. The gazer uh, bites at Keza. It's nothing, nothing too big, but you do lose one health point for that. For Damn. Point. Am I still uh, bleeding from the crow attack? No, you guys, you guys got bandaged up. I guess. Sure. We got bandaged up, bandaged up when we took a break. Yeah, oh, and yeah. then covered, covered in feces, so I'm sure those wounds oh, are healing just, excellently. Yeah, heal, yeah. <laughs> healing super well, yeah. <laughs> okay, first up is uh, Stephanos. Okay, I'm going to use my spell, inflict wound, ha -ba -da, -da, -ba da da Steve is not Steve, he's actually Ryan Bergara. Roll d20, 22. Okay, well that's a hit. Roll for damage. I'm going to roll d10 and... Six. That's not bad. Oh, six. That's not bad. Pretty good. You inflict wound on this weird, floaty, uh, sweaty-looking eyeball. Um, it doesn't look great when you inflict the wound. There's <laughs> pus pouring out of it now, and it looks oh. very angry. Next up is Keza. Uh, I'm gonna use my glaive so that I can stay further back from it. Oh, good thinking. Get, 
spit again. Um, so I pull out my long glaive and I try to stab it directly uh, in the eyeball. All right, give it a go. I rolled a 10. That is a miss, unfortunately. Okay. Bastard. Oh no, this darn thing. <laughs> the gazer kind of uh, just kind of shifts out of your way. It's floating in the air, so it can kind of bounce around. Uh, next up is the gazer. The gazer kind of vibrates in the air and Ugh. shudders a bit. Let's see, a one and a four. From its eyes shoot two uh, dazzling rays. One of them strikes Keza, or sent, is sent in her direction. The other one uh, shoots toward Steve. Okay, so Keza, you need to uh, roll a saving throw. Eight. <laughs> okay, so the ray does hit you and you are uh, charmed until the gazer's next turn. So now you're at a disadvantage on your attack rolls until his next turn, which means anytime you attack, you roll two d20s and th you only use the lower one. Mm. So I'm, I'm charmed? You're very charmed by this gazer. Aw, kinda um, cute actually. Yeah, and uh, Steve, why don't you roll a, a saving throw? Uh, and if you have any strength modifiers, you can add it to your result. Well, it looks like I rolled a two. You are blasted by the telekinetic ray of the gazer and it pushes you 30 feet back into the sewer tunnel. Bye, Steve! <laughs> ah, yowza! Oh. You look like you're jet skiing across, uh, yeah, across uh, the, the poop, the poop uh, pool. <laughs> you turned me into a pool rocket. Um, next up oh, is our yeah. good friend, Renair. He says, well, I've just met that young man, but how dare you? And he takes, <laughs> yeah, out, his, uh, takes out his rapier and uh, lunges at the gazer. Uh, that's gonna be a hit. All right, he uh, plunges his rapier into the gazer's eye, uh, and, and more ooze and blood just start to pour out of it. Um, the gazer kind of, you know, hobbles around in the air a bit, bumps into the wall, but it's still levitating. Uh, it's looking angry, but also uh, you're really, really mutilating this thing. Um, Aw, it looks so cute. Rainier says, ha ha, take that, you rotten cretin. Next up is Keza, um, who is charmed. Um, so I'm gonna roll 2d20. I still have my glaive out. Seven and 15. You're still so charmed. You're in quite a state. You swing at the gazer and miss by about four feet. Um, uh, it, well, but the stunning, the stunning failure of this sort of snaps you back into reality, and you're you're remembering again. Oh um, God! Oh, it's hideous! Ah! Uh, <laughs> now, Stephanos, you're up. All right, all right. Let me take care of this. I'm going to return to my trusty crossbow because I know that my good friend Steve, by the time he gets back up here, we'll take care of all the damage. So. I'm gonna pull out my crossbow. I'm gonna point it at Steve, just to joke with him, cause he's my <laughs> buddy old pal. And then I'm gonna actually point it at the gazer and shoot. <laughs> All right, and I roll a 15. That's a hit. Yeah, uh, get it. Why don't you roll for damage? I rolled a three, but I do have a plus four, so it's a seven okay. total. It's Despite not inflicting a ton of damage, you do enough and the gazer as you plunge uh, the bolt of your crossbow into it, uh, it sort of tremors wildly uh, and spasms until the life fades from its body. Woo! Nice. And it is now nice. silent and everything still smells like shit, but it is calm now, quiet. Is Steve caught up with us yet? <laughs> Yeah, hold on, wait up for me. I just gotta come back from a, where the hell this thing sent me. He turned my ass cheeks into a wave runner. <laughs> oh, <laughs> very you far. smell awful. Well, uh, we all smell awful, so it doesn't really matter, does it? I Let don't know, you smell drag. worse. Somehow you smell worse. He's a smelly guy. I think that's uh, pretty canon at this point. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> hey, what can I say? I don't believe in showers. Should we gather like a, a, a DNA trace just in case we need to just Pokedex this thing later yeah. on? Yeah, That's a scholarly let's, thing to do. There you I'll go. Take an eye. I'll take an eye since we uh, right. did the eye check. Stephanos, okay. uh, pop down there and grab an eye. I don't need to roll. I need. I don't need to bend down because I'm already short enough. But I just 
reach over and take an eye. Lovely. And I put it on my face, jokingly, looking at <laughs> Steve, and I say, I see <laughs> your soul. I love you. It's like cutting the face off of a human and dancing around with it. <laughs> Stephanos is a funny guy. I don't know how I guess so. You. I think this guy might be a murderer. I have all four eyes and now I'm juggling them. Did you know that I can oh, juggle them? Oh, yeah. This? Well, yes. Good job. This is psychotic, right? This is psychotic. Everyone realizes this is psychotic. I, no, right? This, this guy's is like fun. a serial killer. Renair is watching with great delight and he says, <laughs> You are a very good bard, Stephanos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Renair, oh, yes. All, One of the best bards I've ever seen. Stephanos is Thank truly a wonderful you. bard. <laughs> I am one of the best entertainers, but you know what? I will say, Steve, he is the best bard I've ever met. So I take all credit for my learnings from this young gentleman right here. Renair looks surprised. He turns over to Steve and says, Oh, I didn't realize. Are you also a bard? Oh, uh, sorry. I actually tuned out this freak show about five minutes ago. <laughs> I can't believe I'm traveling with these <laughs> these creeps. Huh. As you look behind this, uh, this mutilated corpse, you see a tunnel. Uh, and again, above the tunnel is this marking of the, uh, the circle with the ten rays coming out of it. Uh, and you have stumbled upon what is a Xanathar lair. What awaits in the Xanathar lair? I think we'll have to find out next week. Aww. We made it! We made it here! You did make it. You made it. You trudged through the shit. You're all very smelly. All right, tune in next week to find out what awaits our uh, adventurous heroes in the Xanathar hideout, and if they will ever find their good friend, Flume Blogmar. We'll see you then. Bye.